Welcome to Fun with Julian Engineering. I guess most of us are drivers, and we all remember from the driving school that driving a car requires some experience. When the motor RPM is too slow, the car will jack. And if the RPM is too fast, then the motor will not accelerate any further. So you obviously have to maintain a certain optimum motor RPM so that the engine runs smoothly. We can see in this performance chart, on the horizontal axis, we can see the motor RPM, and on the vertical axis, we can read out the torque developed by the engine. Here we see clearly that there's an optimal range where the engine works very well. To the left and to the right of this range, the engine does not perform very well. There's the motor develops only little torque and is quite weak. The official unit to measure motor power is kilowatt. However, in our lives, especially in connection with cars, people seem to prefer to talk about the number of horsepowers the engine has. The motor power can easily be calculated. We just need to start from the actual motor RPM on the x-axis of this diagram, move vertically upwards to the curve, and read out the associated torque on the y-axis. In order to calculate the motor power, we just multiply the motor RPM with the corresponding motor torque and treat the units properly. Here in this example, the motor runs with 3,000 revolutions per minute and 170 newton meters of torque. If we multiply them as shown in the formula, the result is a motor power of 53 kilowatts, which is equivalent to 72 horsepowers. So in the example, the car runs with 72 horsepowers, but only at this particular motor speed. Now, if the traffic light is red, we stand still and wait and the motor does not rotate. Without any RPM, the power output of the motor is, of course, zero. Well, therefore, you can see that the specification of a motor power only makes sense if we also specify the motor RPM for it. This happens in the vehicle registration document of our cars. You can have a look. The horsepower indication of the motor is always linked with a specific motor RPM. Okay, now let's go back to our performance chart. Since most people are mainly interested in the power output of the motor, there is a curve in the performance diagram for most engines which shows you the power output directly. For example, at 3000 RPM, we simply go up to the power curve and then to the right scale, and then we'll find the same 53 kilowatts we just calculated some minutes ago. So far, we have talked about cars. So how does this relate to a downhole motor? We already know what a downhole motor looks like, of course. In a so-called positive displacement motor, mud is pumped through the power section along with its rotor and stator, and this creates a rotation of the drill bit. Of course, we also have a performance chart for downhole motors, and they look pretty much like the one for petrol engines. So here we can see a performance chart for a downhole motor. On the left axis, we can read out the torque. The motor RPM is found on the x-axis at the bottom. And on the right scale, you can see the power output, just like we saw for the car. Now, there's only one peculiarity. A downhole motor works deep down in the borehole, and we cannot see how fast it rotates. The driller on the rig floor instead uses some other operational parameters that are available in the driller's cabin and on the rig floor at the surface to estimate the RPM of the downhole motor. These parameters used are the flow rate of the mud pumps, the pressure delivered by the pumps, or to be more precise, the pressure which is consumed by the downhole motor. In the performance chart for our downhole motor, we first look for the line which represents the actual flow rate across the motor. Here in this example, let's assume it is 2,200 liters per minute. Then we look at the horizontal line that corresponds to the pressure drop across the downhole motor. In this case, let's assume it is 20 bars. Now we move to the intersection between these two lines and from the intersection point, we can go straight downwards to read the actual downhole motor RPM. 
And at the left of the intersection, we can find the torque which the motor provides. Finally, on the right axis, we can also see, like a car performance diagram, the power output of the motor. In our example, this drill bit works with a power of 48 kilowatts or 65 horsepower on the bottom of the borehole. So, by observing the operational parameters of the mud pumps, the driller on the rig floor always knows exactly how the Daho motor deep down several kilometers at the drill bit is performing. And so he has full control over the entire drilling process. If you would like to know more details, come to our lecture, Basics of Drilling Engineering, here in Freiburg. We look forward to see you. Look off.